Thank you, Kim Charnley, for inviting me to be on the now. Uh, I'm going to just present several projects that have come across my desktop over the last few weeks related to the situation that we find ourselves in now, the one that may very well we be facing uh, in the very near future, and then wrap up with a discussion of Social Practice Queens, which is about a 10-year-old educational program where we bring artists together with the idea of uh, investigating social justice and community concerns and leadership skills uh, within the visual arts community. So I hope this will be interesting to you and uh, add to the database that you're creating for Beyond the Now. Thanks very much. It's a project that I find really interesting by Carrie Mae Weems, uh, an important African-American artist who's been working for decades with all kinds of media, particularly around photography, but also graphics, some performance work. And this is a collaborative project she did with her class uh, upstate New York, Syracuse. It's one of those industrial cities that were, was hammered in the 1970s and 80s with uh, displacement and globalization issues. And uh, she got the students together to create some graphics for public space about social distancing and also about respecting essential workers, which you can see here. It's a very large graphic. I think this is a Photoshop on the left, but what you see on the right are actually installed in Syracuse. And you can kind of see it's a, it's a tough looking city in many ways, even today. A lot of abandoned storefronts. And I don't think it's just because of COVID that we see them boarded up. Look for the link at the end of the video. This is the new project by 16 Beaver Street. Uh, they're now calling themselves 16 Beaver Group, but they were originally 16 Beaver Street when they were actually located on 16 Beaver Street, which is down in the Wall Street Financial District of Manhattan. And they had a space where people would gather on a regular basis, discuss all kinds of interesting topics, uh, very intense discussions, sometimes very informal discussions. People like Brian Holmes would drop in, uh, give talks. And uh, they went on for like uh, several decades in that space. So it's an important uh, kind of counter institution. And I should say that they never actually incorporated or became an NGO. They remained really totally informal as a structure. Uh, the other thing I would say is that they were the launching place, one of the central or key launching places for Occupy Wall Street. Uh, David Graeber was part of the group on a regular basis discussing things and, and it moved from the space down the street to Wall Street uh, when the occupation took place. Now they have the Society of the Friends of the Virus, which is an ongoing weekly discussion, usually on the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, in which they talk about the current situation and future situations with people like Sylvia Federici, Fred Moten, and, and others. And it's, it's quite an important part, I think, of any way we conceptualize an alternative to the situation we are in more generally, whether you call that a kind of post-neoliberalism or a nationalist capitalism or just a plain old crisis. Sally Docks, or Salt Docks, is located on Dusadoro Island in Venice, Italy, and it is uh, has been for years a really important collaborative cultural institution, uh, very alternative to, as you can imagine, everything else that goes on in Venice especially. Um, I've done a number of projects with them over the years, and I'll show you one of them in a second. But I don't know exactly what they're doing now in terms of the situation with COVID, although I'm sure they're giving a lot of consideration and thought because, of course, Venice is one of the places where things really broke out since it's right next to Milan. Uh, and of course, they're also experiencing uh, incredible flooding. Last November, I was on my way there and literally had to 
turn back from the airport because the city was flooded. So it's a city in its own situation, in its own crisis, but Sally Docks and the people there do an amazing job with all kinds of interesting exhibitions, programs, and interventions, including moving out into the uh, bay and into the canal where they uh, confront gigantic, enormous uh, cruise ships that bring tourists in because they're damaging the very fragile lagoon there. This is a very new project <clears throat> by uh, Alberto Dumont and Ali Issa uh, out of Middlesex in the UK. And they're really creating a kind of online course that you can apply to and become part of, uh, which is, uh, I guess, tentatively titled The Future is Just Like Now. Uh, kind of an ironic title, but maybe not so ironic, sadly. And you can see they have a number of interesting thematics that they're working on, including future agency, imagination, hope, and change. And that one might be particularly useful to your project, Professor Charlie. Uh, as you can see, they want to sort of see themselves as the center of a whole lot of things that are going on. And uh, I think they do have connections all, all over the world, so it will be interesting to see how that develops. And here's Ali and uh, Alberto, snapshots of them. Ashkel Alwan was started years ago after the Civil War in Beirut, Lebanon, by Christine Tomei, uh, the curator, and several other folks. Um, and it's been around for, for many years until very recently when the explosion in the Beirut port really destroyed the building. Now that doesn't mean Ashkel Alwan's destroyed. We all hope that we'll be able to pull things together and it'll be born again, as so many things in Beirut, Lebanon have been born again many times through many difficulties. But this is the old industrial building that was uh, renovated for Ashkel Alwan around 2010, after being more of a floating project before that. And one of the other projects that Ashkel created and Christine created was a school, a pedagogical program called Home Workspace Program. Based on a series of exhibitions she curated over the years, Home, Work, uh, Home Workspace, and this is the program which really saw Beirut, the city, as sort of the, the uh, hub of, uh, of a learning experience, an urban, you might say, classroom. And the people came, uh, students came, participants, and I, and I sort of hesitate to call them students because many of them were practicing artists, quite sophisticated, uh, and they came from all over the world, Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, and the Middle East, and, and, and in, in the U.S. and Latin America, pretty much everywhere, to attend these programs, which were unique, really, in the area. There's really nothing quite like this in the Middle East, certainly not in that immediate area of Lebanon, Syria, etc., except for perhaps in, in Ramallah and Gaza. And I want to talk in, in a minute about Gaza. But just to say that if you want to assist Christine and uh, Ashkel Awan and the whole workspace to get back on its feet, I'm going to provide a link where you can send some support funds because they really are very desperate. To uh, my own blog, which I call Welcome to Our Bear Art World, and uh, the most recent post of August 20th, this year, 2020, I talk about a number of things, uh, including Beirut and Be Belarus, which I'll talk about in a second. But Gaza uh, is, of course, a place that's been under incredible duress for, for many years because of the blockade by the Israelis of necessary goods and so forth. Uh, but there is an interesting project being developed by Ali Ryan and Monica, uh, I'm Mona Kregler. And that is called After the Turn, an educational program beyond the canon, which they're really just kind of getting off the ground in Gaza. In, uh, again, not unlike Beirut, in some abandoned or very, you know, sort of uh, decrepit spaces that need to be kind of rebuilt, and which have been sort of beautified by people going in and creating murals uh, in, in the spaces, as you can see here. And let me just give you a quick video that Mona created herself of one of those videos. She'll be speaking in German, and I can't translate that, but here we are. Ja klar, man, von unten sieht man es besser, aber dass man das halt mal von, von, 
Und er, er, er kreiert die, die, die Figuren also in seinem Gedächtnis oder? Just to give you a flavor of this project that's in the works, it does have the support of the Goethe Institute, and it's quite exciting to see that taking place, and we'll be keeping an eye on that, how it develops. Just to flip back to Beirut for one second, this is actually a picture of Christine in the space that has been destroyed now. The old furniture factory in the port area of Beirut that was turned into Ashkalawan's uh, school, essentially, and this is what it looked like after the re renovation, home workspace. Okay. New neighborhood Mobet is uh, in the Mobet neighborhood in Berlin, Germany, and it was actually created by Marina Naprishkina, who is from uh, Minsk, Belarus, an uh, artist from Minsk, Belarus, and she calls it a, you know, a fictional institution or a para-institution uh, because it's not really uh, legally institutionalized inside Germany, it's actually an art project. So it sort of trespasses into that space of the NGO, or what we call in the United States the 501c3 not-for-profit. And what goes on there is people who come to the neighborhood of Mobit, which traditionally has been working class, an immigrant and student neighborhood, people who are coming often as refugees from of course, Syria and other parts of northern uh, uh, Middle East and northern Africa, and she invites them in. There's very inexpensive meals. There's entertainment and music. There's free uh, legal courses and legal assistance, so they can work out their own citizenship papers or whatever is necessary. Free classes in German and other languages that are useful for people who are essentially, uh, you know, displaced at this point in a very severe way. And she calls it new neighborhood because she didn't want to call them refugees. She wanted to say, you're our new neighbors, herself being a displaced person from Belarus. And here you see Marina, who is in Belarus right now in Minsk, protesting the uh, elections, or we might call them just the uh, uh, fictional elections uh, of Lukashenko, who is so far has refused to step down when he's clearly lost power there. Uh, so we, we wish her a great deal of safety and hope. And the last project I want to talk about is my own project that I work on with Chloe Bass in Queens College, New York City, which we call Social Practice Queens. In a way, combines three important pieces. One is Queens College, which is a public university, part of the City University of New York. Another is Queens, New York City itself, as, a, as a, one of the most diverse communities, perhaps, in the entire world. And then Queens Museum, which is well known for its work in the community. And we've kind of brought these three things together in what we call Social Practice Queens, or SPQ, Art and Social Action. Um, this is just from our website showing you some of the projects, student projects, community projects. We have a dedicated studio space at the museum where students often go to create installations, to meet, to have presentations, to discuss things. And they often work with well-known artists. This is again Meryl Ukelis more recently, a few years ago, and a group of our students working together at the museum where she was having her important retrospective and they were working on researching and assisting her with that project. Uh, Mariam Ghani, speaking about her field work and her work around archives for our program. Again, we bring in lots of people to speak to the students. And this is a class that was run by Chloe Bass, who is the co-director, and you will see her or seen her before, already. Uh, this is a project at the Center for the Humanities, and it was a guest speaker from uh, Argentina talking about projects they're doing in uh, South America, ecological projects. And here's Chloe again leading a sort of tour, a group of people outside in the streets of New York City. We very much look at the city as a place for education and learning to happen. 
again, back to Queens, this is Flushing, which is where Queens College is located. And it's one of the most religiously diverse places in the world within the Queens, which is itself one of the most ethnically diverse. And this particular project talked about all these many different houses of worship that are located just within a few blocks of each other in Flushing. Barry Klein, one of our first graduate students who works with uh, union carpenters, electricians, pipe benders, metal fitters to create sculptures that they develop together and they call themselves Workers Art Coalition. Again, you might say straddling the line between what is kind of labor or craft of labor and what is art. And this is the team again with a project and another project they did out <clears throat> at uh, Queen's Museum with the famous Unisphere in the background from 1964. Cody Herman does walking tours of ecologically, uh, let's say, damaged or uh, precarious parts of the city. And she sometimes puts up what are really just completely guerrilla fake signs in, in the, in the uh, uh, parts of the city to talk about things like Flushing Creek, which nobody even knows exists because it's so hidden from view in an urban setting. But the students also do installations, art installations, at the Clapper Hall Gallery, which is part of Queens College Art Department. And it looks like art, and we also put it all together in the form of a book called Art as Social Action, which has many different contributors, not just people from our particular program, but many people who are doing this kind of work and it goes step by step showing you how you can teach art and social justice, art and social action uh, in the classroom. And here in order are the various projects and people that I spoke about, Carrie Mae Weems, 16 Beaver Group, Sally Docks, uh, Ali and Alberto's new project, Ashka Awan, Ali Ryan, Mana Krieger's project in Gaza, Marina Naprishkina's project in Berlin, and our project Social Practice Queens here in New York City. And I realize that you can't just click on this uh, video, uh, but I will provide links for all those projects uh, to uh, the program so that you'll be able to sort of click on that and access it if you would like. Thank you very much for inviting me to this important project, and I wish you much, much luck with it.